The chair recognizes the ranking member of the full committee, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Katko, for an opening statement. Mr. Chairman, uh, you stole my thunder because I was going to welcome Ira Flores as well to, to Congress in general, but into the, for this committee in particular, given her proximity to the southwest border, her expertise in that regard will, will be a, a, definitely a value add to the committee. So I want to thank you for holding this hearing today, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate our witnesses being here to discuss how we can work together physically to physically protect our state and local election, election officials while also securing election infrastructure from foreign interference and cyber threats. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, is charged by Congress with being the nation's lead civilian cybersecurity agency, and it plays a critical role in this endeavor. I look forward to our witnesses' perspectives on ways to improve the physical security of our elections, as well as the tools and services provided by CISA to shore up our election cyber defenses. They've come a long way for sure. Our committee remains committed to securing our democratically run elections from all threats, including physical threats to election workers. Following the 2020 presidential election, the Department of Justice reported more than 850 incidents of threats and harassment targeting election workers. Issues such as these will not be tolerated and can and should continue to be dealt with by local law enforcement. In recent years, foreign adversaries like Russia, Iran, and China have targeted U.S. elections both through election influence and election interference. Foreign actors seek to undermine our elections both directly by tampering with our election systems and indirectly by attempting to influence how people think about an election. Let me be clear. The United States will not allow any adversary to sow distrust or chaos in our democratic process. In addition to these foreign interference efforts, our nation is seeing a spike in cyber threats across all 16 critical infrastructure sectors, and the election infrastructure sector is no exception. Simply being vigilant is no longer enough. Today's cyber threat environment demands a posture of unwavering resilience. As we enter the 2022 elections, we must keep a keen eye on the midterms and ensure that voters can be confident that their vote will be cast securely. Given the volume and sophistication of the cyber threats we face, we must empower CISA with the tools and resources it needs to support our state and local election officials so that they can carry out their mission to administer free and fair elections. CISA's election security mission has greatly evolved since election infrastructure was designated as a subsector of our nation's critical infrastructure in 2017. CISA has gone to great lengths to build trusted relationships with state and local election officials across the country and has provided free and voluntary cybersecurity services tools, and other guidance in all 50 states. A key part of securing election infrastructure that is owned and operated by state and local governments, not the federal government, is ensuring that CISA has the ability to provide situational awareness about vulnerabilities across digital footprints. I am pleased that we are joined today by Secretary LaRose, who as Ohio Secretary of State serves as state's chief elections officer. The Secretary spent years working to ensure Ohio's elections are secure, and he was even named Legislator of the Year in 2016 by the Ohio Association of Election Officials for his work to improve the state's election process. I look forward to hearing from the Secretary and all our witnesses today about the practical, meaningful steps Congress can take to improve CISA's ability to support our state and local officials in protecting the cyber and physical security of our elections. Cybersecurity is indeed a team sport, and now is the time to double down. Protecting the homeland requires partnerships throughout all levels of government and across industries and party lines. Working together, we can be prepared not only for the threats of today, but also the emerging risks of tomorrow. And before I close briefly, I just want to give you one quick story. Several years ago, or two years ago, we had an election security task force meeting up in, uh, in central New York. And we have the election officials there from the counties in my district. And one woman told me that she received 1,762 directives from the election security task force in one year. She shares her chief information security officer with 20 something other agencies in her county. And no one's digesting that information. That's one of the big concerns I have and that's one of the big things we need to tackle going forward is how do we make, how do we make actionable the information we're getting from uh, the experts. And that's something that we, I wanna hear from you, Ms. Howard and, and the other witnesses today. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you.